Hello, I am Frank Kane, and this is Frankly Speaking, the show where we dig deep into the insights of some of the world's leading policymakers. Today, I am pleased to welcome to the studio Baha Hariri, business billionaire and member of one of Lebanon's most important political families, and of course, the eldest son of late Rafik Hariri, the slain prime minister. He is going to share his thoughts on the future of Lebanon and its role within the Middle East's challenging political landscape. Mr. Hariri, welcome to Frankly Speaking. Thank you for having me, Frank. Thank it's a you. pleasure to have you. It's my pleasure to be with Can you. Can I start by quoting what the IMF said recently about Lebanon? Mm. It said, uh, towards the end of last year, Lebanon is, quote, struggling with profound economic and social challenges, aggravated by a pandemic, but even more so by the shortage of political will to adopt and implement meaningful, meaningful reforms the people of Lebanon have been calling for. Yes. So, with a collapsing economy, politics on standstill, a militant group controlling a lot of the country, and a pandemic outbreak, frankly speaking, is Lebanon beyond saving now? Well, I believe, uh, I believe in the uh, DNA of the Lebanese people. Uh, I believe we were in a civil war, and that civil war even was worse than where we are today. The country was in utter destruction, uh, and uh, we were able to pull out of the abyss. Uh, today, we don't have a civil war. We have complete mismanagement of a configuration that is in complete divorce. Uh, that configuration, of course, is Hezbollah and the warlords, and whoever supported them does in, is in complete divorce uh, with the Lebanese uh, people. Uh, having said that, that means that we have to organize ourselves to make sure that, uh, that our house is in order from the inside and make sure that our Arab neighbors and the international community uh, gives us the support that is needed so we can move forward for, for that. So, of course, no. I truly believe that uh, uh, people will change at the precipice. We are at the precipice and every Lebanese has come down and, sh and was very clear uh, to what are their demands and how they want to move forward. Mr. Hariri, you have identified, it seems to me, the crux of the problem there and that is Hezbollah. How do you deal with a problem like Hezbollah, a large, organized, armed force within the country? Mm -hmm. How do you counter that organization? Well, it's crystal clear today that Hezbollah and the warlords have uh, fallen politically. If we, have, if we look at the majority of the Lebanese population, they are completely against that configuration. We have to make sure across sectarian divide, forces of moderation, uh, hand in hand, put a complete comprehensive plan whether it's uh, economic plan, COVID plan, constitutional plan, a judiciary plan, a security plan, we put it together and we start pushing for it from the inside and the outside to talk to the Arab, uh, our Arab neighbors uh, who seek to help us out and the international community that we are willing to get our house in order internally. Uh, and that means that is the super majority of the Lebanese people, not the simple majority, but I truly believe today more and more the crisis deepens. It's going to be more and more the super majority of the Lebanese people. That will ask uh, that me, uh, for, for this help. This means that this configuration has uh, uh, fallen politically, maybe not militarily, but politically more and more time advances. It has fully, fully fallen politically. Tell me, how do you define the supermajority? What does that coalition consist of? Uh, we, uh, you know, Lebanon is like a mosaic. If you look at every piece of that mosaic, it's beautiful. But when you look at its totality, then it's, it's a beautiful piece of art. Uh, like uh, Leonardo da Vinci, like, uh, like, uh, like all the, 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 the beautiful uh, painters uh, in, the, in the world. So Lebanon, we have Sunni, we have Christians, we have Shia. We, we believe that all must be playing a, a key role. In, in the new Lebanon, but of course uh, uh, outside the sectarian divide. And what I mean by that, we have the Taif Accord. The Taif Accord costed us eight years and 250,000 dead. If we are going to come to the Arab world and the international community, they'll tell us you have an accord. Uh, three quarters of it haven't been executed. Uh, uh, if we want a new accord, it, it may take us another 10 years and maybe half a million dead. Uh, so we have an accord, and actually the, the, the custodian of that accord is the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We seek its help. Uh, uh, so we, uh, Rafi Harir Bassasol was the architect of that accord, of course. We need to, to make sure that this accord to the letter uh, uh, is executed. And what we mean by that is, uh, is the separation of religion from the executive and legislative branch, the establishment of a Senate, 
that protects minorities, uh, the establishment of uh, uh, independent judiciary, uh, uh, and of, of course, at the end, making sure that we have an electoral law that uh, meet the aspiration of all the Lebanese, uh, and we have a new election. Uh, but don't you think that your international partners uh, have lost patience with Lebanon, with mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the, the mess in the economy, in politics, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the health situation? Mm -hmm. um, uh, why should your international partners, like Saudi Arabia and others, why mm -hmm. should they help what is essentially well on the way to being a failed state? Mm -hmm. Be because this is where the work, the hard work is, we're, we're working day and night, is, is uh, we are seeking everybody who believes in this plan uh, to coalesce with us and to, so we can take Lebanon from where it is, which is the abyss. We are not going into the abyss, we are in the abyss, to take Lebanon from where it is today to uh, to this new configuration. Uh, 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 we have to work very hard and I call on all the Lebanese who believe that wants to get rid of that configuration uh, hand in hand for us to be able to move forward, uh, as I said, across the sectarian divide. Yes. President Macron of France mm -hmm. uh, offered to help, mm -hmm. tried to help, mm -hmm. uh, but he ran out of patience too. Mm -hmm. uh, don't you think others will just go the same way over time? What's, sorry, also let me ask you, what did you think of his uh, uh, efforts there? We, we welcome all efforts from the international community, uh, but the most important thing is that it, has, it must and has to meet the aspiration of the Lebanese. The Lebanese wants total divorce of Hezbollah and the warlords. Uh, we, I don't think Lebanon can afford anymore any patch-up solutions. Uh, at the end, France is a great nation. We respect it. We welcome its help. And uh, we welcome uh, any initiative, but uh, uh, as we say, it has to fall in line with the aspiration of the revolution, which is clearly more and more stating, uh, there is a phrase they've, they've, they've established, kullun, yani, mean, kullun means uh, yani kullun, yeah, yeah, which, yeah, means, yeah. which means yes. Uh, but what was the problem there? Were there, were there too many strings attached to the French uh, uh, offers of assistance? It's the, uh, they were looking for economic reform and to engage uh, with Hezbollah, but you know, I don't know the details of it, but it's clear that it has, there were many roadblocks internally for, that, for it not to move forward. We're yes. back to Hezbollah again, and that seems to be the stumbling block once again, as it was yes. for France too. Yes. yes. So, you know, we, we will keep returning to this one, won't we? Yes. Until we remove them from the equation, it seems. Yes. yes. But we, we, are, we, we are not escalating for the sake of escalation. Uh, if we look at the situation a year ago, more and more nations within Europe has followed the path of the leadership of the United States and Britain uh, in the sense of Hezbollah, its uh, political and military branch are a terrorist organization. Yeah. As we've seen, Germany has followed, many nations in Europe and outside Europe has followed. So we are entering, uh, we're not escalating for the sake of escalation. We are saying that many optics are going to see the light of day. Negotiations are on the way between the United States and the Iranians. I don't think so. It's going to be only JCPOA. I think it's going to be JCPOA, missile issue, and the proxies. So the Iranians have a lot of their hands to, uh, to work on. The Saudis are moving uh, uh, for, we saw what happened uh, in Qatar. We welcome the peace mm. that happened uh, in Qatar. We are for peace at the end of the day as Lebanese. But I think the Iranians are, are, are you know, blowing against all that current, and that current is massive, it's gaining momentum. So our escalation is not for the sake of escalation, it's for the sake is to stick to our demands okay. and to hopefully to get as much as uh, we can from them. Okay. Um, again, a matter of international justice. The International Tribunal uh, uh, that reported last mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. on the assassination of your father. Bless his soul, yes. Um, many people thought that that was a whitewash. Uh, mm. it, it named a small number of members of Hezbollah mm -hmm. uh, as being in mm -hmm. some way responsible, but mm -hmm. it didn't attribute responsibility to, to the leadership. Mm -hmm. Do you think that your father got justice from that report? Uh, for, for us, it is closure, what happened in the internet. Closure? It is closure. Not justice? Uh, uh, the, the, uh, we believe that a, a key member of Hezbollah was uh, uh, the verdict that was guilty at the assassination mm, one, one mm. yes was his, his, he was a key and the, the 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 court as you know these courts they are not after uh, a party they cannot they are after individuals and the courts were very clear in saying that they had evidence but not enough evidence to 
to uh, to indict the others but they said they had evidence but not enough evidence so this is uh, we you know we but we believe in the judiciary uh, the international uh, uh, system uh, and if that is their judgment we believe but also and that's they the end of the road now it can't go anywhere else you can't take it any further no no it cannot take any further but what, what we what we can take as i said it's about the nation, about the people of Lebanon, and to me, it's about Rafi Harir and his legacy. Uh, uh, to well, me, tell one me about of the key, the key issues is the Taif, to make sure that okay. the Taif becomes a reality. Tell me about his legacy now, mm -hmm. um, because it, 16 years ago, he, mm -hmm. he, he was murdered. Yes. Uh, and hasn't all the economic chaos and anarchy and the uh, 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 political uncertainty yes. uh, since then, hasn't that tarnished his legacy Has, hasn't that wasted his legacy mm. no you cannot because if we are going to go to england as with winston churchill after he died he's not responsible for the doing for the ones who are after him mm. winston churchill was a great leader of great britain the same thing for roosevelt or abraham lincoln who was assassinated you cannot judge anyone after his death he has nothing to do he is not responsible for what happened no, after. no i'm not thinking no, of him no, being responsible no, i'm thinking no. of subsequent generations of politicians and policy makers absolutely. who wasted what he did. Absolutely, they did. But, uh, they, and they have to bear the responsibility, the full responsibility, because we were almost there, Frank, as you remember. We were almost there. Mm. And, 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 the and, the, and the international court said, you know, the, 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 uh, he joined, Rafi Hari joined, that Hezbollah has to be disarmed, and the Syrian had to leave. Uh, and this is the main reason why it was a more of a political, they, 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 they were very clear of saying it was a political assassination. So we were almost there. Yes, they have to bear the full brunt and the responsibility of what happened. Okay. Yes. Speaking of family matters, your brother, mm -hmm. of course, is mm -hmm. Prime Minister Designate, mm -hmm. uh, hasn't been able to form a government yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but what's your relationship with him? Are, mm -hmm. you, are you supportive of his, of his Prime Minister Designate status? I, I love, you know, uh, as a brother, uh, I love him very much. Uh, he, he's my little brother. I love him very much. Uh, this will never change. Not today, not tomorrow, not till the end of my days. Uh, but I have stark differences politically with him. Uh, I think this has been very clear in that issue. And at the end of the day, it's not me who decides. It's the Lebanese people who were very clear in their demands. They said Hezbollah, the warlords, and whoever supported them, uh, they have nothing to do in the rebuilding of it, this new Lebanon. So my position is with the people. So you, you, you would not support him if his government uh, involved the participation of Hezbollah? Absolutely not. Okay, that's pretty, uh, pretty clear. Pretty clear. Um, have you conveyed this message to him? I think, you know, uh, with, with the media, I've been m much more than clear. You cannot, uh, you cannot solve the problem when you, when, you know, when these cronies uh, are are the problem mm. okay and this hasn't happened for a year or two we've been go we've been on it for almost 16 years now right 16 years okay. so if we are not get didn't understand after 16 years this is the issue then i don't know when we will uh, you said in a recent interview uh, at my age i can't just sit and do nothing about it about yes. the situation yes, yes. so uh, you know this is a very clear question to you frankly speaking, would you like to be prime minister mm -hmm. and doing something about it? You know, uh, the beauty of democracy, as you know, is to serve the, in the best way you can. As I said before, I have, no, I have no intention to do that. But definitely, as a Lebanese, it's not about me. It's about the nation, the people. And to me, of course, as Baha Hariri, the legacy of Rafi Hariri. So what I want to do is to put a full, full flesh plan and to have all good Lebanese to coalesce around it and for us to move forward. I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the, the answers to many questions, but I don't want to be the leader. But if I can show leadership for it to move forward, then I will do everything in my powers for that to become reality. OK, OK. Um, what about the president, mm -hmm. uh, Michel Aoun? What, what, you know, what are your thoughts uh, on the way that he is handling things? Uh, he's, been, he's been quite... Uh, uh, you know, as, as we said, they, 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 they only think in one way. Warlords, as we know in the history of the world, uh, are people who do not believe in, in uh, nation building. So it's about each, you know, uh, not, not him only, you know, all, all the warlords that are in power, they want to make sure that they are 
in their fiefdom and their share is there regardless of nation building or, and, and moving, moving the nation forward. Right. So my opinion is the same to, to, to all the warlords, not to, to, not to only one. We cannot uh, take one and, 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 and isolate the others. Okay. Okay. Uh, his uh, his son-in-law, mm -hmm. uh, Gebran Basile, mm -hmm. uh, was sanctioned. Sanctioned, yes. Do you think that that was justified? Do, do you think that others should also be sanctioned? Yes, absolutely. I think that it's not enough. I think other has to be sanctioned. Can you Anyone? give me any names? Uh, I don't have any names because for us, I believe in the, in the justice system. You are innocent until you are proven guilty. That is a, a universal system everywhere. Until the verdict comes and, and the proof is there, then you are guilty. Okay. Uh, I do not believe in a Bolshevik revolution. I do not believe in a, in a Libyan revolution. I believe in the rule of law, so that, which means uh, I do not believe that you have to put the guillotine and start <laughs> like the French did. I believe that it has to be done okay. in a, in a, uh, under, the, uh, under the, rule, the rule of law. Right. You, are not, you are not guilty until you are innocent, until you are proven guilty. Of course, you have prosecutors who will come and say, these are the facts we have. You have your right to have your lawyers. Like Hezbollah said that I have tarnished his reputation. He has his rights at the end. This is the court system. And I have my lawyers and everyone pleads his case. Mr. Hariri, the two big forces in the region, Saudi Arabia and Iran, mm -hmm. explain to me the difference between them as far as Lebanon is, is concerned. And which do you regard as a true friend of Lebanon? Mm -hmm. Very, very clear question, thank you. Uh, as you know, Lebanon is this constitution. Lebanon uh, is, uh, is Arabic within its constitution and its, uh, uh, and its, uh, and its affiliation. Uh, of course, also, Lebanon is known to be uh, on the Mediterranean. And as you know, us as Lebanese, we speak three languages. We speak Arabic, we speak English, we speak French. So this is uh, something we pride ourselves upon, that we are in between both worlds. So the Arabia, uh, has done a lot for Lebanon, has helped us within the Taif Accord uh, on the political stability, has helped us in putting billions of dollar deposits after the Taif Accord to stabilize the currency, has encouraged, uh, uh, it was always in the lead in encouraging other GCC nations in pouring foreign direct investment deposits in the central bank to stabilize Lebanon and encourage foreign direct investments from the Arab world to invest in Lebanon through its direct public entities and private entities. Uh, on the other side, we have Iran, who has never given us a penny, who has always supported a terrorist organization called Hezbollah that, has, that is not the Lebanese people, but only a sect within the Lebanese people, has uh, killed people, uh, uh, has tried to, to destroy everything we're trying, good us as good Lebanese to move forward. So we have a nation who has stabilized us uh, constitutionally, politically, economically, financially, and another nation who has killed, and firstly to me, as Baha Rafiq Hariri is one of its key members, killed Rafiq Hariri, uh, promotes uh, terrorism in Lebanon and in the region. For, of course, to me, uh, the choice is, is, is not even doubtful. It is Saudi Arabia is our true friend. It, yes. it seems no contest. Yes. Uh, of course, you uh, were involved in Saudi Arabian business for a long time, weren't you, Saudi Oje? Yes. Uh, but you aren't any more there. Yes. Uh, uh, but if you could uh, succinctly sum up how you see Saudi business now, especially in the uh, the way that the kingdom has handled the pandemic mm. crisis, you know, the the economic crisis that yes. came from the pandemic. Yes, what yes. do you think, in a, in a nutshell? Yeah, I believe I believe the Abraham Accords are going to put a new situation in, in, in not only Saudi Arabia but in the region. I believe in peace. We are, uh, as you know, Rafi is a man of peace uh, uh, and we have to be all, we have to all go into that uh, uh, train. Of course there are issues we need to resolve but I think once that peace with all, whether, whether it's Lebanon, Palestine, uh, Syria, uh, uh, all the nations that have issues to, until we reach that configuration, uh, I believe uh, that the Abraham Accords and the continuation of just peace will bring a new era of stability uh, which will lead to a, a new configuration of uh, investment not only from the oil proceeds that the Arab, uh, the GCC has, but also from, uh, uh, from foreign direct investment that will come with the stability. You know, uh, all great nations have, uh, have entities that measure the stability of, of, a, of a country. 
And based on that stability, they will finance a project from a large company. So the more stability, the more they are willing uh, to, 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 to finance. You know, that I know as a businessman, yes. whether it's in England, Risk France. Risk analysis. And, exactly. Know, they analyze and they say we're, we're willing. So the more peace we are, we have the better off. And there, are, there could be massive regional projects that will take the, the, the region to, uh, to, to a new era. And but Saudi has these, of course. And very the, uh, exactly, exactly. So I believe, I believe and hopefully we can move forward. Of course, there are issues that have to be resolved. We all have issues, but once these issues are resolved, whether it's in Palestine, Syria, or Lebanon, then I believe Abraham Accords and what comes and afterwards, the moves like there, has, there has to be. Okay. We have to move forward. Of course, you have a big uh, project in Jordan at the moment, yes. uh, Abdali project. Yes. Tell, tell me about that. Has, has that been affected by the uh, uh, economic recession from the pandemic? Uh, to tell you frankly, no. You know, as Lebanese, we are hard workers. We have a good team, a Jordanian team. Uh, we have today, you know, proudly to say we have uh, Amazon as, as one of our key tenants. Uh, we put a complete ecosystem. I believe in jobs. I'm very proud to say that this project has generated over 8,000 jobs today directly and indirectly because it's in the service sector you multiply that minimum by five so it's almost uh, 35,000 uh, indirect jobs so I believe the most important thing to me in that project is jobs Rafi Hariri believed in education I'm everyone to his own way I believe that jobs are the only way that when you give a job to a person from nine to five he has to wake up early he looks forward to go to his work and uh, uh, for his children so I'm very proud to say that we have over 8,000 jobs today. And that and employment and, and those jobs haven't been affected by the pandemic lockdowns? No, 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 because we have, we have a hospital, we have, we have banking, we have hotels also, we have, uh, uh, you know, restaurants. We have been in the forefront of adjusting to the, uh, uh, to the COVID uh, regulations and been very restrictive to give security to everyone coming, which means social distancing, putting masks, we provide to them. So we, we, we are trying to be forward in that because at the end it is the city center of Amman and we have to be in the lead to, to set up an example. So yes, we were affected, but not as much as, as others because okay, we, were in the lead. we were in the lead in, in, in making sure that it is uh, uh, science-based uh, 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 treatment, whether it's the mask, whether it's you know the, the things you put on your hand to, to clean, whether how many people you have in a restaurant, the rotation, all of that, we were very restrictive and we were in the lead. Yes. Okay. Baha Hariri, thank you very much for thank a you. fascinating conversation. Thank I'm you. very grateful thank you. to you for appearing on Frankly Speaking today. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me. Thank you.